You can find rice fields like this one all over the Sacramento River Basin. But there are some farmers growing more than just rice, and it's a little bit fishy. We met up with a group of students who can tell us all about it. Going fishing. How's that for a cool class assignment? Anybody want to touch this one? He feels a little bit different than the bass. <laughs> oh, look at that, guys! Awesome! Awesome! No hooks are used to catch these fish. They're for studying, not eating. You see how amazing? That's called papulose lips. And the study is an important one in Northern California. People from the Department of Fish and Wildlife Researchers from the University of California at Davis, a state group called California Trout, and the landowner and rice farmer where the research is being conducted. Together, they're working to save endangered California Chinook salmon. Raise your hand, how many of you named the fish we had in the classroom? Federal. These Northern California sixth graders are research assistants for the Nagiri Project. So if the salmon didn't uh, give the carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus to the trees, and the trees couldn't help us, and then it would raise the chance of global warming. This kind of research is usually done by college graduate students, not in elementary school. But these students are helping out. That's not the only interesting thing about the Nigiri Project. It's the name. If you've been to a sushi restaurant, you know Nigiri is the word for fresh fish on top of rice. Well, in these flooded rice fields, baby fish are swimming around to get big and strong for their journey out to the ocean. It's fish on rice. Get it? We farm rice from basically May to October. In the wintertime, we want to do as much as possible to recreate the wetlands that used to be out here. John Brennan, an owner of the Robbins Rice Company, says the salmon didn't have a problem getting from inland California to the Pacific Ocean until people came here about a hundred years ago. There was a big argument about how to control this flood water. And originally, everybody tried to solve it on their own. Everybody built their own levees. Those levees carved up the big floodplains with canals to control the water for farming. That confused the migrating salmon. Oh! There's at least one fish. This giant fish trap is set up in a dead end drainage canal, which wrong way salmon mistake for a river. Jacob Katz leads the conservation group California Trout. Adult salmon swim upstream towards water. That's what they do. And so uh, after a rain system, when these canals fill up with, with runoff, uh, the fish, uh, some certain percentage of them, think that it's a tributary or a stream and will swim into that system, really to their doom. So they rescue the fish in this trap and send them back to the river. As the kids have learned, that's just one of the many threats to endangered salmon. Two of the students developed this game to teach kids about the risks salmon face trying to make it out to the ocean. So the point of the game is to show the struggles of salmon going through the life cycle. And it's really hard for them to survive. Like there's sharks, predators, then there's hot water temperature, so low in oxygen, and there's bears when you waterfalls. And did their classmates like the games? Yes, yes. Uh, there was a line reaching from here all the way like over there, and, and the whole class was just engaged. But as you've yep. seen, the kids do more than just work with virtual That's fish. That's it, yeah, right. Sophie. Teacher Leslie Whiteford helps the students raise baby salmon, or fry, in tanks. The kids learn how to turn their fry into fat adolescents. All in an attempt to try and create a place where these baby fry can get right nice and fat and chubby before they head back into the river and down to the delta where they head out to sea. So the Nagiri Project was created to provide a place for the salmon to get big and fat before making the journey out to the Golden Gate Bridge to the ocean. So what's on a salmon's dinner menu to help them fatten up? Lots of stuff. If you know what to look for, even a tray of dirty water filled with zooplankton can be interesting and fattening. And they're able to eat these Daphnia pulex all day, every day, and get really fat. It's kind of like being able to sit on the couch and eat cheeseburgers all day. They like it, they want to do it, and they're going to keep doing it. Pull okay, pull slow. Good, good, good. Okay, give it a big pull out of the water. Oh! oh lots of fish. Okay, help us get them in the water, quick. Large seine nets catch the young fish so the students can weigh, measure, and record their progress. The Nagiri Project is in its fourth year, and UC Davis researcher Miranda Tilcock says early results are encouraging. We've used acoustic tags to be able to track some salmon, 
And a lot of them were able to get out to the Golden Gate Bridge within a few weeks, and a really high percentage able to make that trek from the rivers all the way out there. All right, let's do this. Food and nutrients are vital for the fry to grow and survive, but so is the water quality and temperature. How cold is it? <laughs> all right, you guys, so when we're taking water quality, why don't we want surface temperature? Because then it's hotter. Exactly. Yeah, dissolved oxygen and the temperature to dance with. The kids say it's not only fun, this work is meaningful. My favorite part is knowing that I'm helping a species that is endangered and that needs our help. Uh, it makes me feel good because it makes me feel like I'm doing something really good for the world. When I can watch these students get as engaged as they are about right. conservation and a passion in the wildlife. Awesome. To the point where they want to carry it on even farther than I've expected them to do. That's an aha moment for a teacher. I always try to convey to the children that science is not all lab codes and laboratories. That there's a lot of us out here, outside, getting muddy, getting dirty, playing with fish, and getting to do what we love. We're floodplain monsters! Roar! Yes! That was awesome!